There are exactly three things on this earth I enjoy. Video games, cocaine, and cocaine again. Unfortunately, these are some very expensive hobbies for one very poor Tom to have. How the fuck am I supposed to support my life crippling video games addiction and play all the latest drugs at the same time? I'm not made of money. I didn't grow up in the Hamptons. I ain't white chicks. Thankfully, indie developers will occasionally put out games that itch the scratch of AAA releases without expecting you to take out a second mortgage on your dog. So I've decided to take a look at some of these indie games that'll fill the same void in your calloused, empty heart, and also hopefully save you a few V-Bucks in a new little series I've decided to call Masterpiece for your wallet. So in a nutshell, the idea of this show is that if you like, say, Dark Souls, then you should try Hollow Knight. Or if you like Dark Souls, then you should try Salt and Sanctuary. Or Necropolis. Or Titan Souls. Or Ashen. Or Blasphemous. Hmm. Indie developers really like Dark Souls. Oh, let me see here. Uh, Dark Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls. Oh, here's one. Red Dead Redemption 2 is without a doubt one of the best games to come out in the last decade. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I haven't played it yet. I'm very poor. Which is why instead, I've been playing Westerado Double Barreled. So, just like Grand Theft Horse 2, it's an open world western cowboy em up where you can pretty much just fuck around and do whatever you like. The actual goal is to hunt down and kill the man who murdered your family, which is pretty much standard procedure as far as video game plots go, but the hook here is that the culprit is an actual NPC walking around the world whose appearance is randomly generated each time you start a new game. So you have to narrow down your man's identity by finishing missions and getting clues, which encourages you to explore and do more shit in an attempt to get as much information as possible so you don't accidentally... You're also rewarded for exploring by having new paths revealed for you to go down in future runs. An average playthrough of this game will generally last anywhere between 1 and 3 hours, but this is the amount of time I've spent with it. So you can see that replayability is the name of the game. There's even a bunch of different endings that'll get tailored around what you did. Like, you can literally kill anyone you meet at any time, so it's nice to have your actions reflected in the ending, but also to not have to deal with all that murder baggage for too long, since the game is so short. By going down one questline, you'll often lock- Lock? You'll often lock? you'll often lock yourself out of six others, so you're encouraged to hop back in once you're done. One time I found myself running with a gang of outlaws, robbing banks and dabbing on the lawman. Another time I was a bounty hunter for the sheriff, dabbing on crooks. Sorry pal, but you're going to jail. Then I joined the army and dabbed on some engines. The time after that I focused on bringing prosperity back to Santa Ana and dabbed on... the... poverty. There are also up to three playable characters who will start with different weapons or abilities. Well, uh, actually four characters. I, uh, I, I can't figure out how to unlock this guy. But no matter who you play as or what wacky misadventures you find yourself in, the ultimate goal is always going to be gathering as many clues as possible so you can... Actually, speaking of shooting innocent people in the face, what's cool about the combat in this game is that all the gunfire Plagues takes on the- Plagues takes? Jesus Christ, I haven't slept in nine days. All the gunfire takes place, nailed it, on the x-axis, which makes everything feel like an old western duel. And you're rewarded for accurate shooting with extra health. See, when you get shot in this game, it's contextualised by having your hat shot off, and then when you run out of hats, they start aiming for your face, I guess. But you can also shoot off an enemy's hat and use it to stall your way out of a sticky situation if you're a good enough shot. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Not only is this a super funny and charming homage to how much Western movies love their hat shooting, but it also frames your ability to get shot multiple times in a way that makes sense within the context of the game. I'ma go on a little tangent real quick. Ares dies in Final Fantasy VII. I know. Spoilers. And whenever you hear someone joke, oh, why didn't they just revive her with a phoenix down? It always comes across as pedantic and not funny. That's because phoenix downs are never mentioned in universe, so they're generally accepted as just a gameplay mechanic and not an actual part of the world. Same way we're not expected to believe everyone actually just waits around politely for their turn to attack. That's just how the game works. 
On the other side of the coin, the Vita chambers and Bioshock feel really contrived because the characters actually do mention them and give a sort of half-assed explanation for how they work. Of course, Ryan will only allow it to be tuned to his genetic frequencies for the testing. Like, we don't need a reason for Mario to respawn after he dies. We just accept it and carry on squishing turtles. This might seem like a small detail, but it's actually super important to making your world feel consistent. You either give a good reason why you're still alive, or you don't mention it at all. It's played for laughs here, sure, but when your brother is mortally wounded because he wasn't wearing a hat, it's funny, but it also makes sense. Anyway, tangent over. Like I was saying about the combat, there's a couple of different weapons to play around with. There's the standard revolver, which works pretty much how you'd expect, the rifle, which pierces through multiple enemies, dual revolvers that can fire in both directions at the same time, this rope thing that you can use to tie people up, and the shotgun, which is a shotgun. But you can only carry three weapons at any time, so it's important to... Oh my god, that's actually him. <laughs> I was just doing a bit. <laughs> oh, I saved my favourite thing to last. In this game, you can pull your gun out in the middle of any conversation for absolutely no reason. Some people think they can outsmart me. Maybe. Maybe. I've yet to meet one that can outsmart a bullet. Look, humans only live for about 80 years. Maybe, if you're lucky, 25. And we spend so much of that time waiting for people we don't care about to just stop talking. So the addition of random and totally unnecessary gun to a dialogue system is the most paramount innovation in video games since Waluigi. Not only can you use this method to progress missions or unlock new options and stuff, but also, and far more importantly, it's just really funny. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blind Barry is dead. <laughs> His name is Len. <laughs> Can Clementine whip out a fucking shotgun in the middle of any conversation just because she doesn't like the cut of the other guy's jib? Whatever. Didn't think so. This is why your garbage company is going out of business. Look, the game is great. It's not too expensive, and if you're still not convinced, there's an early prototype build of the game you can play online for free. It's a browser version too, which means you don't even have to download anything, so you have no excuses not to give it a go. Just keep in mind it's more of a proof of concept than an actual demo, so it's not nearly as polished as the full release, but it's definitely worth checking out if you're still on the fence. But you can take my word for it. Westerado Double Barreled, just like Red Dead Redemption 2, is a charming, open-world Western action game just bursting with personality. And it really makes you feel like Spider-Man. Ready, partner? Well, someone shot my brother C. He burnt the barn down and then he flees. Revenge is coming in the shape of me. When I'm hunting by a gas, I'm none too happy, can't you tell? I'ma kill the bastard straight to hell, cause dead comes are my clientele. When I'm hunting by gas, bounty hunting all day long, and I ain't gonna stop. When I catch the gutless rascal in his ass to cap up. <laughs> in his ass a cap up. I'm a fucking moron.